Welcome back, Legends. What's going on? My name's Kurt Rosie. This is Supreme TV, and tonight I'm going to teach you how to set up your force feedback in iRacing. Let's go. I can't stress enough how important it is to have specific force feedback settings for each and every car on iRacing. There are some settings that remain the same, but you need to be able to change the number for each and every car. Now there's a lot more settings with the direct drive. Usually it has its own software that comes with it, but things like a Logitech G29 um, or you know any of the Thrustmaster belt driven or a CSL Elite, uh, which I raced on for a really, really long time, they don't have as much customization as a direct drive. So you do need to use some of the settings in iRacing to help you with that. I am gonna set up my force feedback for the LMP2 car for the first time since I've gotten my direct drive. So first thing we're gonna do is head up to options here. Now, as you can see, a few things that you will need to check before you start tweaking with these things here. Now this can be pretty overwhelming. We're only looking at the force feedback thing here today. Firstly, what you wanna do is have a wheel that has force feedback. Obviously that's the biggest thing. If you don't have force feedback, then you obviously need to untick this. If you are using a direct drive, then you need to use linear mode. It will likely feel better with this check. If you uncheck it, it can make less powerful wheels feel a little bit better. They'll feel a little bit more lively. The third setting there is reduce force when parked. Uh, this is personal preference. Um, I always have it checked just because you don't want any sort of weird things happening when you're say in the pits or you know, you've got damage or whatever. So when the car's stopped, obviously then that reduces the force of the wheel. Um, so it stops any weird inconsistencies happening. So for this next part, what you need to do is find out how much force your wheel can produce. Now I'm running the VRS Direct Force Pro, which in this second one here, wheel force, I'm gonna set that at 20 Newton meters because that's how much I know that the VRS puts out. Strength is how heavy the, the force feedback is. So you can change this to max force. Um, I'm not 100% sure how that works. So I usually keep it on strength and adjust from there. We'll get into this number for now. I'm just gonna leave it where it is currently. But once we jump into the session, there is an auto setting that will adjust the car force feedback and the way that you can have this per car is if you tick the bottom thing that says use custom controls for this car that's super critical make sure you do that for every car because that way you can adjust this and fine tune it for each and every different car now smoothing i tend to run the rest of these three things off when um, using the direct drive, basically because the VRS Direct Force Pro comes with third-party software that can do things like smoothing and damping and filters and, and things like that. So you don't really need to worry about that too much in iRacing as you can deal with it in, in the other program. A gear driven wheel like a Logitech or um, some of the lower end uh, Fanatec models, you can apply some of these filters to try and smooth out so for smoothing obviously you're smoothing out the higher frequency things so um like uh weird things that happen at, at higher frequencies obviously damping will add sort of like a filter that goes on top of of what's being sent to the wheel things like uh gear driven wheels will be a little bit notchy so this can help and and add a sense of weight to the wheel starting with a relatively low strength of force feedback uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into the session now, jump into the car, and then I'm gonna get my black box down here to the graphics adjustment page. And you can see here, there is a line that says FFB strength. So what you wanna do here is keep an eye on that. So we're gonna go out, we're gonna do probably a couple laps here at Daytona. Um, try not to hit a wall and try not to go off on the grass as well. Do try a little bit to avoid the curbs sometimes because that can give you a weird reading as well. Um, so we're gonna head out now. You would not believe that I accidentally signed up for a race then. So um, back into the session. All right, 
we are going to head out, do an opening lap. Um, and to be honest, by the time the opening lap happens, we should get um, a, the button pop up for auto. Uh, we'll probably do maybe a little bit more than just in our lap so we can get some, some proper um, data in. So I tend to um, drive a car sort of like I would if I was racing in. Um, so as you can see down the bottom there, uh, in the bottom right, the auto button has popped up. So we're going to click, click that. So it's adjusted it to 10.3. Now let's see if that feels sort of good. We're going to do a little bit more driving here. I can definitely feel it's got a lot heavier. It's very early braking there. It's been a little while since I've driven the LMP2. So you can see that the auto thing has popped up again. It's, it's constantly trying to adjust based on our driving. driving is clearly terrible which is great so i'm going to do a little bit more here i'm going to do another probably get up onto the bank section and then i'll hit it again and see what it says all right it's raised it a little bit more uh, i'm pretty comfortable with how that feels um, i feel like it, it may get a little bit tiring over a longer stint but i can cross that picture and look at there i think it feels pretty good Currently, I've got a lot of uh, feeling. I've got a lot of feeling in the, um, in the wheel. Um, the other thing that I am a little bit concerned about is when I went over those um, the rib strips there, that the, the force feedback was clipping a little bit. So um, you can see it's adjusted it again. So it's gone back down to 10.3. So. Um, probably run this maybe just a fraction lower um, I'm thinking maybe like around 9.1 9. which is still strong enough without being sort of overbearing you have to really brief on the wheel that also did sort of seem to fix our uh, force feedback clipping situation so and that's it it's as simple as that. Now there are a couple other uh, things you can do to get a more accurate number as to, you know, things like minimum force and stuff like that. Um, there's a few other YouTubers that have de dealt with that. You can go and check them out. Um, I'll leave the link in the description down below, but I thought I'd just keep it nice, short and sweet just so that people can uh, quickly get in. If you're new to iRacing, this is a perfect way to set it up, at least at, at first, um, and then get out there and get racing. So we'll see you in the next one. Peace.